So there are a couple of practices that I consider to be essential, foundational in my business that no matter what, I will keep coming back to again and again. Well, one of those practices, you if you watch any of my other videos, you know uh, that I talk about this all the time. It's consistent content creation. Um, even when I'm sick, uh, there's one thing that I do, which is I create content no matter what. Uh, right now, I am recovering from a cold. Uh, the cold kind of started a little bit last Thursday, and then and then Friday was full on symptoms, a little bit of the chills. As you know, on Friday, I made my video anyway. I was trying not to cough in my last video. I don't know if you noticed. Um, now I'm on the, I've I've gotten to the worst part of the cold. Now I'm kind of starting the the upward swing. Uh, my wife just made me put this on so that I don't get too cold. I said, no, this is too formal or whatever. She's like, no, put it on. Um, so content creation, consistent content creation, even when I'm sick, uh, is, 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 is like a religion for me. If there is a business religion, authentic business religion, I would say content creation is one of the foundational tenets of it uh, because it's too easy. It's too easy to fall off that wagon. Oh, I'm sick right now, so I don't feel like it. I can't create content. No, no, no. No matter if I'm sick, I can create bad content, but I'm going to create it because, of course, bad is only in my own head. And, of course, when I'm sick, I'm even more judgmental probably of myself, more critical. And so bad content usually turns out to be okay content, sometimes even just right content from, for, for one's audience. So even no matter if you say it's bad, it's going to be okay. Um, uh, so the other practice though, that's foundational, which I don't talk often enough about, and I probably should talk about it more often is frequent creative rest. And in fact, the fact that I'm sick now is, uh, a reminder of how important it is frequent creative rest. And I, 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 especially during intense times of business like this you know march was an in, a very intense time in my business i launched my most popular course of the year which is my facebook ads course almost 200 people have signed up for it already uh and the year is just beginning um and my most popular course and then i launched my my new book and so these two things so intense i needed even more rest than I already am good at doing. So let me just tell you what my regular rhythm is. And I want to encourage you to think and consider and practice, or if you want to let me know below this video, what your rhythm is I'm always curious, but I'm here to remind you to go back to thoughtfully creating and, and implementing your own rhythm of, of rest. Now, why do I call it frequent creative rest and not just frequent rest? Well, the reason is that when you are sleeping or when you are relaxing, okay, let's just start there. When you are sleeping, your brain is as active as when you are awake. Did you know that? A lot of people don't. When you are relaxing, just hanging out, doing nothing, however you relax, your brain is as active as when you are focused on your work. So well, how can that be? It's different parts of your brain being active at different times. When you are focused, it is called your, uh, I think it's called the default mode. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's called the focused mode. You know how it, you know how it is. All of us have experienced being focused on our work. You know, you usually, you know, sometimes your, your face looks like this and you're, you're really just intensely thinking about something or working on something. But when you are not working on something, your brain is in the Diffuse mode, D-I-F-F-U-S-E, diffuse mode. Especially after you, are, you have 
thought about something for a few minutes and then you stop thinking about it and you go do something else, your brain is in the diffuse mode. And you probably have experienced moments of breakthrough, flashes of genius, when you are not focused, when you are taking a shower, when you are going on a walk, when you're just sitting down doing nothing, when you're eating, like, where did this idea just come from? This is amazing. Those breakthroughs and those flashes of genius are because you are using your brain's diffuse mode. And that is where most of your creativity, the, the, most of the source of your creativity, actually the power, the, your creative power, most of it is in your subconscious mind. I should have the stat for you. Someone please find this for me. But something like your subconscious mind is however many more times more powerful than your conscious mind. It's, it's, it dwarfs it. It's something like it's, probably, it's at least a thousand times. Your subconscious mind is at least a thousand times more active and powerful and creative and just has more like connections than your, than your conscious mind. It's something like a thousand. It's, it's maybe even something like a million. I don't know. But it's, it's, I know it's at least, it's a huge number. So it's at least a thousand times. So why do we spend so much, why do we think that working means that you have to spend time going like this in front of the computer, like, like thinking hard? Okay. Now, you, you could, of course, you could be in diffuse mode in front of the computer. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the computer. It's, it's, the, it's the thinking hard that, ironically, we misunderstand. You're actually thinking harder when you're not thinking hard. Let's put it that way. So back to this idea of frequent creative rest. Why? Because if you don't rest, you don't allow, if you don't stop focusing, you don't allow for the mind's diffuse mode, which is your most creative side of things. Problem solving, right? Overcoming a challenge, whatever it is, your, your brain's diffuse mode has more resources for you than your typical thinking hard focus mode. Okay, so why frequent? So now we know why it's creative rest because you're tapping into the, the subconscious mind. Now, by the way, um, we can bring spirituality into this if we want to and say that maybe when you're not ego conscious focused, you're more open to spiritual intuition. And so whether you want to call it neuroscience, diffuse mode, you know, learning state, or you want to call it, you know, openness, non-ego, openness to angelic, divine guidance, spirit, you know, however you want to say, it, it's probably the same thing, right? It's obviously science and spirituality, if they're both true, if they're both true, they, they describe one reality. So it's just different language of describing different things. Eventually, hopefully, one, one day in the not too distant future, there may be more merging of the two. But um, the fact is, when we're not egoic focused mode, uh, we're more creative. So now we know why cr creative, why it's called creative rest, because you're more creative when you're, when you're resting, assuming you also add in occasional focus times. Now, why do I say that? Again, it's kind of like, again, I'll, I'll describe it in, a scientific way and I'll describe it in a spiritual way. The scientific way is the diffuse mode is most effective when you have already done some focusing. So if, if somebody all day long, they never focus at all, the diffuse mode is basically using its power to do very random thoughts and you know nothing that productive, you might say productive, okay? But if you want to solve a problem or create a project, you can focus for a little while, and who knows how long that little while is before the diffuse mode is effective. Some people say it's a few minutes, some people say it's half an hour, some people say it's 60 minutes, whatever. But if you focus for, on a project for a while, and then you, you walk away from that project, and you go and relax your mind, basically, that's when the diffuse mode kicks into action, and sometimes, oftentimes, you have some kind of breakthrough or some new perspective when you come back and, and work on the project again. Okay, so, so creative rest. Now, why frequent? Frequent is because we are interspersing focus mode and diffuse mode, focus mode and diffuse mode. 
So instead of egoic left brain focus intensity for like hours and hours and hours, which number one is not fun. For most people, it's not fun. It's not fun for me. Um, and number two, it's not that effective. Okay. And number three, it's a recipe for burnout. Just not, but, but ironically, this is how we've grown up. We've grown up learning that we're supposed to somehow be able or train our minds to be able to focus left brain intense study or writing or whatever for hours and hours and hours. It's, it's outdated. It's not, you know, it's, it doesn't work. I mean, people can force themselves to do it, but they would have been even more creative and even better problem solvers and even better writers or, you know, uh, musicians or artists or business people if they had respected the diffuse mode, not just the focus mode. So I said I was going to describe it in, in, in uh, scientific and spiritual. So scientific is neuro, neuroscience is showing us the importance of switching off between focus mode, diffuse mode, focus mode, diffuse mode, many times, as long as you have enough focus where you can actually plan something and, and, and write something or create something and then diffuse mode. Um, how long is the, should the diffuse mode be? I don't know. Maybe someone can do the research and find out. But even, even two breaths, I find, even two breaths of gentle breathing kicks the diffuse mode in just a little bit. But I would say usually several minutes at least is, is good for the diffuse mode. So that's a scientific description. The spiritual description, the spiritual way of saying it would be, well, this is where, this is where the law of attraction makes sense. You focus on something and then you surrender. You, you intentional, intentionally work on something and then you surrender it to God and let God do the rest. Focus, let God. Focus, let God. And that's a spiritual way of saying it's focus mode, diffuse mode. Okay. So you focus and then let intuition guide you. Left brain and then right brain. You know, scientific and then spiritual, right? So frequent creative rest is, is continually interspersing the focus mode, diffuse mode, left brain, right brain into your day. So how do you work is the question that needs to be addressed here. Do you have this model of, well, if I work, I'm going to be sitting down at the computer for an hour to four hours at a time and then getting up and taking a break. You are not, dis not respecting your focus mode, diffuse mode. You're not respecting your left brain, right brain integration. Okay. I have a, well, recently there has been the popularity of the Pomodoro method, which you may have heard of. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically working for 25 minutes and then taking a break for five minutes and then working for 25 minutes and taking a break for five minutes. So every time you work for 25 minutes and you take a break for five minutes, that's called one Pomodoro. Okay. It's called one Pomodoro. And then after several Pomodoros, 25, 5, 25, 5, 25, 5, you then take a longer break of 15 to 30 minute break. So that's become popular in the recent years. And whoever came up with that, I don't know if they knew about this focus mode, diffuse mode uh, neuroscience, but it matches the neuroscience very well. And it matches spiritual productivity well as also. So that's how I work throughout the day. If you ever do co-working with me, I use focusmate.com, which I feel like everybody should use. Whether you are productive or you're not productive, Focusmate seems to multiply one's productivity. I'm extremely productive. Focusmate has 10 x my productivity. Someone who is not productive at all, Focusmate, maybe only three times their productivity, but that's still huge, right? That's still really big for them. So play, please, everybody, use focusmate.com. Um, great, great service. I use it all the time. So except when I'm, when I'm sick, uh, the week that I'm sick, I don't use focus mate, but otherwise. Um, so, uh, I work 25. I, I actually do more like 26 and three. So I work for 26 minutes and then I take a three minute break and then another 26 minutes and then, you know, five minute break or whatever longer break at the end of the hour before my next uh, session or before my next appointment. 
And during those breaks, what I do is I do a three minute uh, stretch routine along with my energy reboot. Now, if you want the full stretch routine, I taught that in my joyful productivity course. So for those of you who have that course, just go into session one and you can see my full stretch routine there. Um, and if you haven't bought the course, you can. You can buy the course if you want uh, my full teachings on pro joy for productivity. But anyway, just want to make sure you, you do at least this. You at least look at your own work habits and say, am I respecting the diffuse mode enough? And my way of thinking about that is frequent creative rest. Or by the way, another way of saying it is frequent self-care. Frequent self-care, that's really what it is. Okay, frequent self-care or frequent creative rest or respecting your diffuse mode or whatever you want to call it, Pomodoros, are you doing that? Now, by the way, I'm not saying you have to do 25 or 26 minutes before you take a break. Um, some people like to do 45 minutes, 15 minutes, okay? And some people like to do 60 minutes, you know, and 15 minutes or whatever it may be. But design some kind of regular rhythm of breaks into your day. And, the, and, the, and during the break, you could, like I do, my stretch routine with my energy reboot, okay? Or you can go and get, get some tea, okay? Go for a walk, go take a nap, go get a snack, go play with your pets, go, you know, whatever, whatever, go, you know, go text a friend or wh whatever you, you want to do. Go read a book, go listen to some music, go do a dance. Dancing is a great way to take a break. But the key is to build in frequent breaks. And honestly, I think the more frequent, the better. This is why the Pomodoro method works so well. Now, you might say, George, do you really feel like taking a break after every 25, 26 minutes? No. And, and I think that's also one of, the, one of the keys to personal development, right? Is to do things when you don't feel like it, knowing that it's good for you, knowing that whatever you feel like in the moment is probably a trance. We are in trances all day long. We get into this trance and then that trance and then this trance and that trance. And it's, it's up to you for your own self-care and your personal growth to break the trance consciously. That's what conscious living is. It's breaking your trance at any one time to say, no, I'm going to insert a purposeful activity now into this trance that I'm in. So work is a trance too. You're like writing something. You're like, no, no, no. I'm really focused right now. This is really working. I'm not going to take a break. It's probably a mistake. I interrupt myself all day long. I interrupt myself, interrupt myself, interrupt myself because I noticed that when I interrupt myself and go take a break, walk around, pace around, do my stretch routine, get some tea, do my energy reboot, come back, I always, almost always, I have a new perspective about what I'm writing about or a fresh energy to continue writing or whatever it may be. So just because you're, you're, you're on the train, a thought train, don't be afraid to pause the train. Go move your body so you move your brain. Come back and continue the train because you'll find that you have a better, you have a better perspective. It's always some, something, again, why? Because you have just engaged the diffuse mode of your brain. You have just surrendered spiritually and allowed intuition to come in. So that's all I want to say today. Um, I think it's a very important message. Like I said, the two essential practices of my business, if like I did nothing else, content creation consistently and frequent creative rest because those are, those are the bedrock for all the other business success that I've experienced. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to seeing how you want to design your, your work day or your work hour as a result of this. Um, and I look forward to your comments. Thanks for those who are joining me live. Alejandra, Peter, Jason, Wendy, Gudrun, Indra, Lisa, Diane, Sharon, or Shireen, Cindy, and Clara. Hello. Um, Matthew, great to see you. Rachel. And uh, some comments here. Just want to take a look. Yeah, Diane says, all my genius breaks through in diffuse mode. Yeah, there you go. Diane is, is, has experienced it. She's very wise. Uh, 
Check out Diane's podcast, by the way. Someone gets me. Uh, that's the, the name of the podcast. Someone gets me. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Peter says, uh, when you said frequent creative rest, my laptop switched off because of low battery. I got the message. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's good. Um, spirit is working on your laptop. Um, <clears throat> yes. And Alejandro, Alejandro says, yes, we could tap into both intuition and intentionality or focus is int intentionality and then diffuse mode is intuition. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, yeah, Lisa says, remembering, remembering to take breaks has always been an issue for me. It's for all of us. It's true. If you would like some help on that, there are apps, software that can help you. Because a lot of times we, refute, we forget to take breaks when we're at the computer, when we're zoned into whatever we're working on or, or when we're at the phone, on the phone or whatever. So if you want to go, go, go to your phone, if you want the app on the phone, if you want the app at the computer, go and search. Go in the app store and search break reminder. And there are probably dozens uh, uh, or at least several for you to try out. Both on the computer you can find it and both on the, uh, on the phone as well. Break reminder app. Okay, so go and, go and look for it. I don't use it anymore because I've gotten so good at looking at the clock and then taking a break. Or I use timers. I actually work with timers throughout the day. I use um, uh, egg timer, e.ggtimer.com. The letter E dot ggtimer.com it sounds like egg timer but there's a g there's a dot in between e and the gg eggtimer.com but with a dot in between e and gg so i use that all day long uh just to i do i do 10 minute timers just to kind of keep me sharp i just kind of see the timer on the bottom left of the court my, my my screen just to where that time is happening and um and then i'm continuing to work um uh but you could do like 25 minute timers or uh, there's another website called Tomato Timer, which is tomato-timer.com, tomato-timer.com, which is nice because they've already done a, they've already programmed a Pomodoro for you, 25 minute work, five minute breaks. Um, so that's a really nice website to kind of get started with this whole work habit. Um, yeah. So with that, um, I want to wish you uh, happy working, creative. Uh, resting, and uh, let me know how it goes as you try these things out. All right. Be well.